Okay, this is chapter 31, uh, Welding Safety, out of the Welding Principles and Practices book. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the safety uh, issues with electrical safety, oxyacetylene safety, personal protective equipment, uh, burn protection, eye protection, stuff like that. Okay, we'll start off with some of the electrical issues as far as electrical welding processes go. Okay. Uh, electrical welding machines are subject to all different kinds of abuses. Okay. And, and uh, they receive very little expert attention over the years. So you want to be really careful with them. Make sure they're, they're always in good working order. Okay. Uh, never attempt to install or repair a welding machine or any welding equipment. Leave that up to the to the experts to put that stuff in. Um, if a welding machine has to be moved from one spot to another, make sure that the power source is disconnected. Okay. Um, make sure that there's a grounding connection, and I think this is pretty common in all the the new welding machines. There's a grounding connection between the welder itself and the case or the frame. Okay, because simply grounding it to your workpiece is not sufficient. Okay. Uh, they should not be operated above the current ranges that they're rated for. Okay, make sure you, you're always staying below the current range. If it's a 300 amp machine, don't, don't exceed that. Uh, let's see. You should avoid touching electrode holders to grounds or anything when you're, you know, anything that will cause sparks or, or avoid touching them to your skin any of the hot bare parts of the electrode holder should never be touched to skin or wet clothing um, make sure all the connections on the machine are tight and that nothing is loose check it make sure that there's no leaks around of water or anything like that in the immediate area anytime you stop for an extended period of time make sure you shut the machine off and if it's a, a long period of time, like weeks or whatever, unplug it from the power source. Okay? If you're using a gasoline powered machine, uh, make sure if you're inside of a building you have proper ventilation for that. Uh, Macy transformers are usually air cooled. Okay? So make sure, sure that you have proper airflow to those. Don't block the air intake on the machine. Okay, as far as cables and electrical connections, they take a lot of a lot of abuse. They, you know, really get beaten on and, and cut up and cut by sharp corners of steel and stuff that's dropped on them. Uh, drug over over the top of sharp things, sharp objects, and and make sure that uh, any repairs or anything that you do are are fully insulated and taken care of. All splices are covered. Uh, let's see, when several links are uh, coupled together, make sure the connections are all insulated, the ground and the electrode holder. Um, make sure that the stuff is rolled up and not left laying around all over the place so that it's not a fall hazard or a stumble hazard. Uh, special care should be taken to make sure that the supply cables are not near or across the power supply when you're running or any high tension wires or anything like that. Uh, you like to get the, the, make sure that they're extra, the really flexible kind. Okay. Steel conduit containing electric wiring chains, wire ropes, cranes, hoists, and elevators should not carry welding current. Okay. Uh, if a metal structure of a building carries welding current, make sure that the proper electrical contact exists at all joints. All electrical grounds should be intact and all welding work connections should be checked to make sure that they are mechanically sound and electrically adequate for the required current. Okay? Always keep the, the cables and the leads dry. Keep them free of grease and oil or anything that might cause a fire if there would be a spark. Uh, keep the room well ventilated, cool, dry, Okay, as far as the electrode holders go, 
Okay, make sure that they're in pretty good shape. Those things take a beating too, and uh, they tend to get broken and chipped and and stuff like that. So always look at it. Make sure it's in, in fairly good shape before you start welding with it, and make sure you never touch the thing to your bare skin on any of the exposed parts, any of the hot parts of the thing. Uh, also, if it if it gets extremely hot from extended periods of welding, just let it air cool. Don't ever try to cool it in water. Okay, as far as uh, the maintenance of the equipment, like in our shop, we pretty much take care of the maintenance. We have uh, a work study or somebody go through on a regular basis, take the uh, um, all the covers off of the machines and blow them out with, with clean compressed air. Okay, so we'll take care of all of that stuff. That's not something you'll have to worry about in here. But, but in the future, for, for future reference, just want to make sure that that's something you do on a regular basis if you have a, a welding machine or you're running one for a long period of time. So always make sure it stays clean. Make sure that if it has a filter for your air intake of any kind, that remains clean. Always make sure it has good airflow. Okay, make sure that they're unplugged if they're not going to be used for an extended period of time. Okay, let's uh, get into some personal protective equipment referred to in this chapter as PPE. Okay, um, your PPE is only one issue. Okay, you might al also be very aware of your surroundings. Always keep your clothing and work area dry, as clean as possible. That's you know kind of hard to do, but and uh, let's see. Let's start with boots. Okay, it's a good idea always to wear high top boots, preferably made out of leather. Protects your ankles, your feet, your legs. Uh, it's also make sure that you got good soles on them. There's always a possibility you'd be walking around on hot, wet, slippery surfaces. Um, uh, prefer, preferably steel toes, so that if you drop heavy objects, you know you don't break your toes. Okay. Um, molten metal, sparks, things like that, flying down. Try to always wear leather or something like that. Don't wear sandals or something that to keep your, your feet exposed. Okay, slacks or pants and shirt, make sure that they're either cotton or wool, okay, and cotton actually ignites quicker than wool does, but everybody knows that wool's really hot and, and hard to wear. Um, so try to go with cotton, make sure you got no frayed edges on it. Uh, if you're wearing, you know, when your pants, make sure that your, your pant legs aren't rolled up or anything that'll catch sparks there. Make sure that your Shirt pockets have flaps over the top if, the, if you have pockets in them so that you don't have a place there to collect sparks. They'll catch on fire pretty quickly. Uh, make sure that you can close your collar around your neck. Okay, protect your chest and neck area. All right, as far as your hands and forearms, you want to wear gloves with gauntlet type sleeves that come part way up your arms, they'll protect your hands a little bit better, and, and preferably heavily insulated gloves. You know, the heavy, more heavy, heavily insulated they are, the better they're going to protect you from the heat. Uh, anytime you pick stuff up, use pliers or tongs or something. I mean, most burns are caused by metal that isn't red hot because people look at it, they don't, they think as long as it's not red, they can just grab it, you know. Always check in the shop and make sure that whatever you're picking up or looking at, is, is cool. You know, run your hand over the top of it before you grab it. And uh, better yet, just use pliers for, to pick up everything and you won't have to worry about it. As far as your shoulders and upper arms, you want to wear uh, leather sleeves or cape, okay, um, possibly with an apron in the front or also a jacket. And uh, stuff, most of it is made out of leather and that's good. It's very fire resistant and and uh, keeps the sparks away well, but it's heavy and it's hot. They make uh, a lot of this now out of, the, out of a green cotton fabric that's fire re retardant. And uh, those are a lot, in my opinion, a lot more comfortable to wear. Uh, coveralls, same thing. Make sure they're made of cotton. Nothing polyester, nothing that's going to melt. Okay, nothing that's going to burn and stick to your skin. Uh, apron. You know, it's, it's not required that you wear an apron, but 
certainly the more of you that you keep covered, the safer you're going to be. All right, let's talk about eye protection. Anytime you step in the shop, make sure you're wearing a good approved pair of safety glasses, preferably with eye shields or side shields. And uh, make sure that they are safety, safety glasses, shatter resistant. Okay. Um, when you're doing anything as far as arc welding, make sure you're wearing a helmet with the proper shade of lens. Um, we usually recommend 10 or above. Okay. You know, whatever you can wear the darkest lens that you can see to weld with. If you can get away with wearing a 12 and see fine, wear it. Because the darker shade you use, the better it's going to be on your eyes. Uh, a lot of quick change helmets now, the electric ones that, that change automatically, those are getting really popular. And uh, they're really kind of a good thing because they give you full face protection when you're grinding or anything else and you can still see what you're doing. Yet as soon as you strike the arc, they darken and they really are nice. Um, even when you're oxyacetylene welding, make sure you're wearing a dark enough shade because people don't realize it, but, but that flame also puts off UV and, and infrared rays. It's not nearly as intense or concentrated as, as the arc in an arc weld, but it still can be damaging. So make sure you're wearing a proper shade. We usually go with like a shade five on oxyacetylene welding. That's pretty safe. Um, a lot of times cutting, you might have a hard time seeing, drop down to a three or something like that. But it should give you enough uh, protection from the rays from the flame. Um, face shields. Anytime you're in that grinding room or grinding anything, it's always a good idea to wear a face shield. You know, the, the more stuff you get covering your face, the better off you are. See, a lot of people wearing safety glasses that still end up with stuff in their eyes, you know, where quite possibly if they had a face shield on, they might not have. We don't have a lot of incidents of that, but. Quite often, you know, or once in a while, somebody will get something in their eye, uh, even wearing their safety glasses. So make sure those glasses are on your face as soon as you walk in the shop and don't take them off until you leave. Oh, let's see what we got next here. Um, ear protection. We always have earplugs in the, in the tool room in there. Okay, there's a lot of loud noise going on in there and it can be quite damaging to your ears so make sure that anytime you're in the shop or you're around any noises that are loud or anything like that make sure you got earplugs in uh, respiratory protection if you're welding on something and you're not really sure what it is you're welding on always try and check an MSDS on it to make sure that respiratory protection is not required because a lot of things it is you know and uh, of course, the safest way to protect yourself is to keep your head out of that smoke plume. You'll see the fume plume coming up off of the, the steel as you're welding. Keep your head out of that. I mean, you'll see it going towards the ventilation system. We have a really good ventilation system in the shop there. And uh, it sucks the, the fumes directly from your weld right up through a, a funnel and a hose. But make sure you don't get your head in between there where it's dragging it all right past your face. Um, like I said, check your MSDS. If it looks like it requires some sort of a breathing apparatus, you know, always use the right type of respirator with the right type of filter, and it should say on the MSDS what is required for that. Uh, be careful if you're welding on anything galvanized or anything like that. It puts off some pretty noxious fumes, make you sick. Let's see. You want to be careful with the presence of, of any kind of solvents or anything like that that are volatile. Uh, let's see, filler metals, you know, uh, read your MSDSs on your filler metals. Make sure that there isn't anything in there that's going to cause you any problems, depending on what you're welding on. Atmospheric conditions change it too. If it's high humidity and stuff like that, sometimes the the nature of the fumes can change a little bit. Okay, uh, let's talk about hard hats and skull caps. Um, everybody's seen the little cotton welding hats. Those are a good idea to wear those things. Keep the sparks off the top of your head, uh, hopefully out of your ears. Keep your hair from catching on fire. Hard hats, if you're in an area that requires them, of course you can, you can get the hard hat now with the uh, 
the helmet attachment that attaches your helmet directly to your hard hat. Those are pretty nice. They're heavy, you know, if, they're, if you're in an area that doesn't require them, wear the, the cotton hat. But if you are, make sure you get the hard hat with the helmet attachments. Uh, burn protection. Most of your PPE should protect you. You know, you should be fairly well protected from burn, spark, spatter, hot slag. Um, uh, let's see. Wool clo clothing is, is preferable to cotton, like I said before, because um, it's not so easily ignited. But the people tend not to wear it. It's heavy, it's warm, you know. So make sure that you're at least wearing cotton. Just don't wear anything that's going to melt. Uh, for overhead welding or welding in awkward positions in extremely confined spaces, always make sure your ears are protected in places like that. Okay, let's talk about protection against shock for a minute. Okay, voltage required for, for arc welding is relatively low and normally do not cause injury or severe shock. Nevertheless, under some, some circumstances, voltages may be dangerous to life, okay? Uh, the severity of the shock is determined largely by the amount of current flowing through the, the body, okay? And the following safety precautions should reduce the possibility of severe electric shock, okay? Make sure that your machine is grounded. Like I said before, the, just having the ground on the piece of work is not necessarily sufficient. You've got to make sure that the thing is grounded to the frame. Okay. Uh, never permit live metal parts from an electrode holder to touch your skin. Okay, we talked about that earlier. Uh, never cool an electrode holder in water. Talked about that one already. Water-cooled holders for TIG and MIG. Welding, okay. Don't use them if there's any kind of a water leak or anything like that. Um, like in our shop, we have one torch, TIG torch, that is water cooled, okay? But always make sure you don't use it if you see any water dripping out of it or anything. Uh, always turn off the uh, machine when you're changing electrodes in a TIG machine, okay? Or if you're uh, threading electrode holders and stuff like that in a MIG machine too. Put a new wire on or whatever, make sure that the machine is shut off. Poking your fingers around inside of there with it on is, you know. Uh, always take special precautions to preve prevent shock-induced falls, okay? So if you're up in the air, make sure you got the, the proper straps and stuff like that on so that if you're shocked, you don't fall off of something. Uh, let's see, although insulated holders are used and the electrode coatings provide insulation, the welder is nevertheless exposed to the open circuit voltage when changing electrodes, okay? He or she should avoid standing on wet floors, coming into contact with a grounding surface, okay? Uh, if you're on a, a uh, wet floor, try to use rubber mats or something to insulate yourself from the, from the work. The danger of electric shock is increased during periods of high temperature and high humidity. Okay, we mentioned that early, earlier. Uh, if a power source is not working properly, in other words, if your welding machine isn't working properly, carefully turn it off, okay? The switch is in insulated, so you shouldn't get shock turning the thing off, okay? But never touch electrical equipment that isn't working properly. Just report it, and we'll get it taken care of. Uh, remove any rings or, or other metal jewelry before you start welding, okay? That eliminates the possibility of shock. Okay, I think we'll go on to oxyacetylene safety, uh, like care of cylinders. Okay, oxyacetylene welding and cutting require the use of, mixt of a mixture of flammable gases and air that is highly explosive, okay? So when you're handling these cylinders, Okay, first off, never lift the cylinders with, with any kind of a hook attached to them or anything like that or strap. Um, they may be lifted by a crane or a derrick only if a cradle or platform is used, okay? Don't sling around them. Don't weld a, 
a hook to the cap or anything like that if you're going to raise them up in the air. The cylinders may be moved by tilting and rolling on their bottom edges. Never drag or slide them, okay? Make sure that they're, if you're wheeling them in, in some sort of a carriage that they're properly chained. Uh, they should be always fastened securely in an upright position while you're using them. Never move unattached cylinders with the regulators on. The cylinder valve should be closed and, the, and should be capped before you move them. Uh, let's see, cylinder valves must be closed when the work is finished, okay? So always make sure they're shut off and make sure all the lines are bled out. Keep the cylinders away from the welding and cutting operations so that sparks and hot slag and stuff don't reach them, okay? Do not place cylinders near an electric circuit. They must not be used as a ground in arc welding, nor to strike an arc. Okay, tampering with the numbers and markings stamped on the cylinders is illegal, so don't mess with them. Never attempt to refill a cylinder or mix gases in a cylinder. Okay, leave that to the professionals again. Okay, storage of cylinders. Cylinders are stored in dry, well-ventilated areas away from open flames. Okay, cylinders should be protected against the weather, ice, and snow. Okay, don't let snow accumulate on them. We have our manifold out back, and that happens quite regularly, and we have to go out and sweep the snow off of them pretty regular. So. Uh, they should be screened against continuous direct rays from the sun, and that will prevent excessive rises in temperature and pressure, you know. Cylinders should not be exposed to temperatures above 130 degrees Fahrenheit or below minus 20. Cylinders must not be stored near highly flammable substances such as oil and gas, okay. Cylinders shall be stored away from locations where the heavy moving objects may strike or fall on them. Okay, acetylene cylinders. Acetylene is a fuel gas and should be referred to by its proper name and not by the word gas, okay? Always store and use acetylene cylinders with the valve up, okay? They have acetone in them. If you lay them down, the acetone flows out into the valve, gets into all the equipment. Uh, keep sparks and open flame away from the cylinders. Always handle acetylene cylinders very carefully. A damaged cylinder may leak and cause a fire. Okay, do not use acetylene directly from the cylinder. Install a regulator. Always make sure it's got a regulator on any of them. Uh, make sure before you connect the regulator to a cylinder valve to open the valve slightly and close it immediately. Just crack it open. Make sure you blow out any particles of, of dirt or anything that might be in there. Before removing the regulator from a cylinder valve, close the valve and release the gas from the regulator before you take it off. Never connect two or more cylinders together with a manifold or other connecting device that has not been approved for that purpose. Okay, the cylinder valve should be opened about a quarter, three quarters of a turn. It's three quarters to, to uh, one and a half turns. And the reason for that is that if there's a fire or, or an explosion or something like that, it can be quickly shut off. Acetylene is withdrawn from a bottle at a certain rate, and you can get the maximum withdrawal rate with only three quarters to a turn and a half on the, on the valve. Therefore, there's no point in opening it all the way when you can only draw it off so fast anyway, so you might as well only open it that far that way if there's an, an emergency, some kind of a fire or an explosion, you can get the thing shut off really quick. Uh, never test for acetylene leaks with an open flame. Always use an approved leak detector. Soapy water is the, what it actually is. Um, there's a fuse plug in the, in the acetylene cylinders, and if they overpressure or over temperature, it will pop out or leak, okay? So immediately move the cylinder outdoors if that happens and block the area off for a distance around it, keep everybody away from it until somebody can get there to take care of it. Okay, let's talk about oxygen cylinders now. Okay, I always refer to oxygen by its proper name, oxygen, and not air. 
okay? A lot of people call it air, but it's pure oxygen. Although oxygen itself does not burn, it supports and speeds up combustion. Never permit oil and grease, never use oil and grease on anything to do with oxygen, compressed oxygen, okay? Under pressure, oil and grease will ignite and then it burns violently with, with the oxygen, okay? Uh, never use oxygen as a substitute for compressed air. You know, don't go blowing your clothes off with pure oxygen or anything like that. Uh, do not store oxygen cylinders near combustible material or fuel gases. Okay? Do not use oxygen directly from a cylinder. The pressure must be reduced through regulation. Okay? Make sure you've got a regulator on it, a good regulator in working, good working condition. Okay, never use a hammer or a wrench on the oxygen cylinder valve. If the valve cannot be opened with the hands, return the cylinder to the supplier. Before connecting the regulator, always make sure you crack that cylinder or that valve open and blow any dirt or any particles of any kind out of there. Okay. Face away from the, the cylinder when you do that because it's going to blast out of there pretty good. Don't be directly in line with it. Okay, uh, always make sure that if you're using a manifold, that it's an approved manifold designed for that purpose. Never try to mix gases in an oxygen cylinder. And never interchange equipment made for use with oxygen with equipment intended for use with other gases. Only use approved regulators. Okay, now operator protection. Okay, fire is the greatest hazard to the welder when using the oxyacetylene process. Oxyacetylene uh, welders should wear protective clothing and be very careful not to introduce fire hazards in the welding area. The following precautions should be observed, okay? Never perform cutting operations without goggles fitted with lenses of the proper shade, like I said, preferably of uh, shade five, okay? Uh, the head and hair should be protected by a cap. You're going to have flying sparks all the time. Hands should be protected by gloves. Arms should be protected by sleeves. Okay. The feet should be protected by boots. Uh, pants should be cuffless. Keep cl clothing free from oil and grease. Okay. The torch and hose assembly may be put together carefully and, or must be put together carefully and correctly to ensure safe operation. All right, here's some of the steps to, to assemble the, the whole thing. Okay, connect the oxygen hose from the oxygen regulator to the hose connection on the torch marked oxygen. Okay, oxygen threads are always right-handed threads. Okay, so you can't mess up on the, on the hoses by connecting oxygen to acetylene because oxygen is right-handed. The fuel gas, the acetylene, will be left-handed. Okay, connect the acetylene hose from the acetylene regulator to the hose connection on the torch marked acetylene. And notice on the Victor torches that we have, they are marked. Select the proper welding tip or cutting nozzle and screw it carefully but not too tightly on the torch. You'll notice on these Victors it's just hand tight. When changing torches, shut off the gas at the pressure regulators and not by crimping the hose. <laughs> you know, don't just bend it over and expect it's going to stop. Okay. Use a, a friction lighter, spark lighter, striker, okay? Never use a match or a cigarette lighter to light a torch. And uh, always make sure you know where the torch is pointed when you light it. I mean, you don't want to have it pointed at the person next to you. Don't have it pointed at the hoses or the regulators. Make sure it's pointed in a safe direction. Uh, don't light it with, with, uh, on hot metal, okay? Also, don't reach over and light it off of your buddy's torch next to you when he's over there cutting away, okay? Always extinguish the flame when you're done by closing the acetylene valve first and the oxygen valve next. Now, I've heard that both ways, but I've always shut off the acetylene valve first, which is what it says here, so. Uh, when stopping the operation for a few minutes, it is permissible to to close only the torch valves, okay? So if you're just going to be stopped for a few minutes, just shut the torch off. Go away. If, it, if it's going to be extended periods of time, go ahead and shut down the whole system, bleed the regulators off. 
Oh, let's see. Do not leave unlighted torches connected for use in boiler tubes, tanks, and other confined spaces during lunch hour or when leaving the job for any other reason. Okay? If leakage develops around the, the torch valve stems, tighten the packing nuts and repack them if necessary. Um, anytime we have a problem like that, if you notice a problem like that, just holler and we just send them off and have them, have them redone. If a torch valve does not shut off completely, shut off the gas supply and remove the valve assembly. And once again, if you see something like that happen, then just report it and we'll send it off and get it taken care of. Uh, if the holes in the torch tip or nozzle become clogged, clean them only with a proper size tip drill or tip cleaner. Okay? Don't just stick anything down in there. And be careful with the tip cleaners. They have a tendency to break off and in there. Okay, hoses. It's very important to have the correct hose for the kind of gas used. The generally recognized colors are red for acetylene and other fuel gases and green for oxygen. Don't forget that. Black for inert gases and air. Inert gases like argon when you're taking or something like that. Okay, uh, the following precautions should be taken for proper use and maintenance. Protect the hose from sharp edges. You see this a lot, especially in the TIG booths and stuff. People dropping uh, steel with sharp edges on it, cutting the hoses. And you really want to be careful if you're using acetylene or something like that, actually any of it, because uh, gas like argon will displace the air and it will actually can suffocate you. Acetylene, of course, is explosive and, and oxygen. So make sure you, you always look at the hoses, make sure there isn't any cuts in them or holes in them anywhere. Uh, do not allow the hose to come in contact with oil and grease. Okay, we talked about that earlier. Uh, these materials cause the, the rubber to deteriorate and increase the danger of fire. Okay. Hose should be st stored in cool locations. Be careful not to put it on greasy floors or shelves because the rubber will absorb the grease and oil. Uh, new hose is dusted on the inside with a fine talc, okay, and when you first hook it up, or before you hook it up, you actually want to blow them out a little bit with compressed air, okay. Always examine the hoses carefully for leaks and, and burns, you know, burns are pretty common on oxycelline uh, welding torches and cutting torches and stuff. A lot of times people light it up and not pay any attention, burn holes in them. Okay, uh, always repair the leaks at once by cutting the hose, inserting a new, a new splice, okay? And uh, always check for leaks after you do that. When the hose shows wear at the connections, cut it off, put a new connection in. Uh, do not repair hoses with tape. <laughs> okay, if a flashback occurs and burns back into the hose, discard that length of hose Okay, a flashback of this sort makes a piece of hose unsafe because it burns the inner walls of the hose. Okay, so anytime you have a flashback where it actually burns back into the hoses, make sure that you replace that hose. Don't try to use it again. Um, hose line safety devices, if properly installed and operating, should prevent any reverse flow or flashback into the hoses. Okay, we have those on all the torches, and we've never had a, an instance of any kind of flashback into the hose. Hose connections should be of the regulation type conforming to the standards of the Compressed Gas Association. Okay. Uh, regulators, pressure reducing regulators, both adjustable and non-adjustable, must be used only for the gas at pressures for which they are intended. Okay. Always use the right regulator for the gas being used. Okay, don't use an acetylene regulator, even if you could, on an oxygen bottle. Um, don't try connecting hoses, don't put the wrong fittings, acetylene fittings on a oxygen hose and try using that or anything like that. Okay, make sure all passages are clear before you apply pressure. Never force a regulator onto or into a cylinder valve. Okay. Uh, never use a regulator that, that's creeping. In other words, if it's, if it's allowing um, gas to slip by, 
don't use that. Never use oil on a regulator for any purpose at all. Um, pressure adjusting screws on the regulator should always be fully released and the regulator drained of gas before the regulator is atta attached to the cylinder. In other words, the little adjusting screw on the front, you want to back it out and make sure it's nice and loose. Only skilled mechanics properly instructed in the work should repair regulators and parts, okay? And that's why I say if we have an issue with one, we just sip it, send it off to the welding places and they send it into the company, to Victor, and they'll rebuild them for you. Uh, the working or low pressure gauges attached to the regulators should be periodically tested by the supplier to ensure the ac accuracy of the gauges, okay? Union nuts and connections on regulators should be inspected before use to, to detect faulty seats that may cause leakage of gas when regulators are attached to the cylinder valves. They should be removed from service if damaged. And never use adapters to connect a regulator to a valve that was not designed to fit without the approval of the cylinder gas supplier. Okay? Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention about the oxygen, when you turn on an oxygen bottle, make sure that you turn that on all the way. It has a back seat valve, which means that it has to be on all the way in order to seat the, the back side of the valve keep the oxygen from slipping by. Okay, now we're going to go on to some welding and cutting operations here. The welder must take the following precautions when welding or cutting with the oxyselling process. Okay, first off, do not use the welding or cutting flame where an open, where an open flame of any kind would be dangerous. Okay, such as near rooms containing flammable vapors or liquids, dust, or loose combustible material. Okay. Uh, do not use welding or cutting equipment near dipping or spraying rooms. Okay, if you have paint booths or anything like that, nowhere near that. Be careful when welding or cutting around a sprinkler system. You don't want to set the sprinklers off on yourself. Okay, if the work can be moved, it's better to take it to a safe place rather than perform the work in a hazardous area. Okay. When the work requires that the torches be used near wooden construction and in locations where the combustible material cannot be removed or protected, station extra workers with small holes, chemical extinguishers, or fire pails nearby. It is available to carry a fire extinguisher as regular equipment or advisable to carry one as regular equipment. Anytime you're working on wooden floors or anything like that, okay, basically is what they're saying. Always make sure there's a fire extinguisher nearby. Uh, never do any hot work such as welding or cutting on used drums, barrels, or tanks, okay, or other containers that you don't know what was in them, okay. There are regulations to, as far as doing that kind of stuff. Make sure you check into it. Make sure you know what was in it before you go cutting them apart. Because, uh, you know, anything with a lot of vapors in it can blow up, and there have been a lot of people killed doing that. Um, the inside can be filled with water or sand or an inert gas to displace those vapors. But make sure you know what's in there. Don't just go cutting into a barrel or a tank of any kind. Never put down a torch unless the oxygen and acetylene have been completely shut off. Don't lay it down while it's running. Don't lay it down... Well, it's not running, but the valves are on, okay? Uh, always make sure if, you're, if you've got your cylinders on a, on a cart, a portable cart, make sure that they're chained and fastened securely, okay? Never support work on compressed gas cylinders, okay? Uh, do not cut materials in such a position as to permit severed sections to fall on your legs or feet, okay or the hoses or anything else protect your legs and feet from spark and hot slag all the time do not allow showers of sparks from welding or cutting operation to fall upon persons who may be working below you okay uh, when you're welding or cutting in a confined space such as the interior of a boiler always leave the cylinders on the outside with an attendant and, and lead the gas in through the hose to the point where the work is being done, okay? Don't bring it inside with you. 
Be careful when beginning a cut on a closed container. The air pressure inside will cause it to blow out as soon as the hole is made. Keep your face off to one side. Don't let it blast out and hit you. Never work directly on a concrete floor because when it is heated, concrete may spall. In other words, it pops and big chips of it fly out, okay? Make sure that the room is always well ventilated and do not set the oxygen pressure higher than that required to do the job, okay? And always use the approved personal protection equipment, okay? Now let's talk about backfire and pre-ignition in the torches. Sometimes when welding or cutting, uh, operation can be interrupted by a series of popping sounds at the torch. This is caused by a momentary retrogression of the flame into the torch tip. And backfire results from this pre-ignition of the gases. Okay. Um, here's some of the ways that it can be avoided. Okay, it may be caused by touching the torch tip to the work. Okay. If that happens, the torch can be relighted instantly if the metal being welded or cut is hot enough to ignite the gases. Otherwise, a lighter should be used. Never relight the torch from hot metal in a small hole. Okay. The pressure on, at the regulators may be so, uh, too low. Okay. Adjust the regulator to a little bit higher pressure. What it does is it goes, it goes burning back into the tip looking for, a, for something to, to burn. Okay. The flame may be too small for the tip size. Okay, that'll cause it. Relight the torch and increase the size of the flame. Uh, tip may have carbon deposits or, or metal particles inside the hole. Okay, if they become overheated, they act as igniters for the gas back inside the torch tip. Okay, make sure you clean the tip out good. Um, if welding or cutting in confined areas such as a corner, the tip may become overheated and pre-ignition will take place. Okay, just stop for a little while and let the tip cool. Okay, flashback or sustained backfire. Okay, uh, sustained backfire known as flashback occurs when the retrogression of the flame back into the mixing chamber is accompanied by a hissing or squealing sound and a characteristic smoky, sharp pointed flame of small volume. Okay. So if you hear the thing really hissing loud or squealing, that's, that's known as flashback. That means it's burning back into the mixing chamber, okay? Um, if flashback occurs, immediately shut off the torch, okay? Oxygen valve first, and then close the acetylene valve. After a moment, relight the torch in the usual manner, okay? Okay, the following protection should be provided for welders, all right? And uh, this is stuff that, that should be provided in your shop or anytime you're working around welding or cutting or... Okay, ventilation is necessary when working in confined spaces, okay? So anytime you're working in, in a confined area or a small area or something like that, make sure you have proper ventilation, okay? Oxygen levels may be measured or must be measured. They should be 19 and a half percent to 23 and a half percent, okay? Normal atmospheric air contains about 21 percent, okay? So if you're working in a confined space, make sure you're not burning all the oxygen out of there. Uh, toxic or flammable gases and vapors should be monitored if you're working in a confined space or, or anywhere, for that matter, if you're using or getting toxic or flammable gases. Okay, make sure that they don't reach combustible levels. Uh, gases that are heavier than air will accumulate in low areas, such as pits or tank bottoms. I talked about this earlier with, with uh, inert gases like argon and stuff that will actually go down and displace the oxygen and you'll suffocate, okay? So you want to be careful of that. Uh, gases that are lighter than air will accumulate in high areas, okay? Um, let's see. Always make sure if you're, if you're in a confined space that you have somebody watching out for you, you know, that somebody knows you're there and somebody's paying attention so that if there is a problem, somebody knows. Okay, let's talk about fire protection. 
uh, safety practices for electric and oxyacetylene welding and cutting are required for fire prevention. In addition to those special practices, the following general precautions should be taken whatever any welding or cutting is being done, wherever any welding or cutting is being done. Okay, welding operations should be done in permanent locations free of hazards, fire hazards. Okay, booths should be constructed of non-flammable materials such as asbestos or sheet metal if it is possible. If it, and also, if it is possible, move the job to a place that's preferable, okay? A safe location. Okay, fire is a particular hazard when portable welding equipment is used. Before welding operations in which portable equipment is used are started, the location should be thoroughly inspected by a competent employee to determine what fire protection equipment is necessary, okay? Just Make sure you look around all the time. Make sure that there's nothing that's going to burn there. Make sure that uh, even if there's something nearby, make sure you know where there's a, a close fire extinguisher. Stuff like that. Okay, welding operations should not be permitted in or near rooms containing flammable vapors, liquids, or dust until all fire explosion hazards have been eliminated. Okay, tanks, drums, and pipelines that have contained flammable liquids should be cleaned of all solid or liquid flammable materials. Welding operations should not be performed on spray booths or ducts that may contain combustible deposits. Okay. Uh, where welding has been done in the vicinity of a combustible material, special precautions should be taken to make certain that the sparks and hot slag do not reach such material and thus start a fire. Okay. Uh, wood floors should be swept clean before welding operations are started. Wood floors should be covered with metal or some other non-combustible. Okay. Uh, similarly, sheet metal guards or welding blankets should be used to guard cracks and holes in walls, open doorways, or broken windows. Okay. Uh, worker equipped with a fire extinguisher should be stationed at or near welding operations in hazardous locations, okay? Anytime you're, you're near any combustibles or anything like that. A fire watch is appropriate in the following situations. When there are combustibles on walls, floors, openings that may expose combustibles within 30, a 35 foot radius, okay? Uh, the usual precautions in handling electric power should always be observed. The insulation of the welding cable may be burned off if leads are too small to carry the necessary current, okay? Make sure that you have plenty of big leads and always check them just to make sure that they got plenty of insulation on them. Um, the insulation can also be cut through dragging it across sharp objects and stuff like that. So just always take a look at it and make sure it's safe. Okay, uh, a few other precautions for safe working conditions. Okay, there's a large number of potentially hazardous miscellaneous situations that can also be of concern to a welder. Okay, and here's a few suggestions. If it is necessary for the welder to work at an elevation of more than six feet, adequate provision should be made to prevent falling in case of electric shock. Okay, we talked about that earlier. Make sure you got the right belts and, and stuff on. If welding is performed in confined spaces, such as in tanks and the holes of ships, some means should be provided for quickly removing a welder in case of emergency. Okay. Uh, when welders or welding operators have occasion to leave their work or to stop work for any length of time, they should always be always open the main switch to in the equipment. Okay. Before operations are started, heavy portable equipment mounted on wheels should be securely blocked to prevent accidental movement. Welding equipment should be maintained in good mechanical and electrical condition to avoid unnecessary electrical hazards. Uh, welding equipment should be used in the open and protected from inclement weather conditions. Okay. After welding operations are completed, the welder or welding operator should mark the hot metal. Always mark it if it's hot. Okay. Report all injuries at once. 
Um, good housekeeping is important. Make sure everything is clean. Make sure there's no paper, rags, anything laying around that, that can catch on fire. Okay. Uh, material handling equipment such as cranes and hoists should be maintained in safe operating condition. All tools such as hammers, chisels, brushes, bars, and other hand tools should be maintained in safe condition. Okay, when working with engine driven equipment, be careful not to mishandle fuel. Okay. Don't spill it, slosh it all over, anything like that. Be aware of back injuries, you know, everybody knows lift with your legs. Uh, and use the same care for your safety procedures as you, as you would for your welding procedures, you know. Get it right. Okay? All right, that concludes this one. Good luck on the test.